By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are in Tokyo, Japan for a final match. This is a finals of one of their meetups. And we've got Wub, White, Blue, Black, both for White, Blue, Black decks. On the left side, we have a Robots player. And on the right side, we have a Flies player. So kind of Control, Sarah Angels, that kind of stuff on the right side. And on the left side, we're probably going to see Triskelions. Maybe also the Suchis. The reason I'm saying maybe is that this is an Eternal Central tournament. So this match is played according to the Eternal Central rules, meaning that you do have Mana Burn. So that makes it a little bit tricky to play with the trike, but of course, uh, sorry, to play with the Suchi, I mean, but of course there are enough uh, mana sinks, I guess, like for example, Mistress Factories, I'm sure we're going to see those in the Robots player's deck. Um, and also, when you're playing Eternal Central, uh, you can also play with Fallen Empires and of course with Four Strip Mines. I'm curious to see the deck lists. Talking about that, uh, I'm going to jump into the decks in a moment, but before we do that, first, a word from our sponsor, 3 for one Trading. 3 for 1 Trading is one of Europe's leading Magic the Gathering retailers. Their online shop has a fantastic selection of high-end Magic cards, especially for vintage, legacy and, yes, yes, old-school Magic players. They now exclusively offer my community free, fully insured and fast worldwide shipping on all their high-end singles, full sets and out-of-print sealed products. They upload new cards every Wednesday and have weekly sale offers and reductions waiting just for you. Use my code TIMMY to get free worldwide shipping on your first order over $500 or euros. Have fun ordering those cards and thank you 3 for 1 Trading for sponsoring this video. And now let's continue with our match, the finals here in Japan, Tokyo. And we are back in the finals, yes, yes. And then now before we jump into the uh, finals, we're first going to have a look at the deck decks. And I'm going to start with the deck of the robots player on the left. Let's take a look. And here we see the Robots deck of Kaicho. Now, uh, Robots is very strong in the most old school Magic formats, but especially the formats uh, that allow you to play with four Mishra's Workshops. And we see them here in the deck, four Mishra's Workshops, uh, this land from Antiquities. is just insane. You can tap it, you get three mana, three mana. You can only spend those mana though, they're generic mana on artifacts but that is of course not a problem in this deck i mean look at it it's full of robots and with robots of course i'm referring to the triskelion to the tetravis and to the suchi it's kind of cool to see a full playset of tetravises in the finals that's a card you don't see in most robots deck in other formats um, so it's really nice to see that so tetravis is a 1-1 one, one creature for 6, so that sounds really bad, but it has flying and it comes into play with 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters, so basically it's a 4-4 four, four flyer, and during your upkeep you can take the counters off and you can make 1-1 one, one flyers with those, so it's kind of nice. Um, so if they kill your Tetravis and you manage to get like little Tetravites, then that doesn't matter a lot. Um, it, it's really synergetic with Sage of Letnam. We don't see the Sage in this deck though, because uh, I mean, this deck is all business, right? You just want to play those those artifacts and go. I think uh, a blue card here that's very vital, vital in this deck is Copy Artifact. So Copy Artifact is an enchantment for one blue and one that comes into play and then you can choose an artifact and guess what? Copy it. <laughs> so it's super good because basically it gives you a Triskelion or Tetravis for just two mana. And that is, you know, insane value. Then we also see cards like the Abyss, that also have great synergy, of course, when you only play with artifact creatures. So the Abyss is an enchant world for one black and three from Legends that says during your upkeep, you have to sacrifice a non-artifact creature. Now, if you don't have any other creatures, then you don't have to sacrifice anything, right? So if you only have artifact creatures, this card basically doesn't apply to you. So in this deck, it is a perfect uh, fit. And then we also see an Armageddon here, a one-off Armageddon, which I kind of like as well because he's playing kind of creature heavy. So if he has a lot of creatures on the board and he's ahead on board, he can just cast the Armageddon and get the victory that way. Now, do remember though that I always find Armageddon not as strong in this format as in other formats because you have four strip mines here. So we also see the full four strip mines being played here um, by Kaicho. And that also means that you're playing with a lot of lands. I mean, this is really a format where you cannot think, oh, my mana base is kind of wonky, whatever. No, 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 no. You got to deal with, you know, you got to deal with four strips all the time. So you really got to think about that. So I'm not surprised to see all the Moxin in here, even two more Felwer Stones and a Soul Ring and the Black Lotus. And of course, those workshops that are insane. 
I, I'm not surprised to see that. We also see uh, some one-offs here, like an anime dead one-off that works quite well with the Triskelion. So, I mean, overall, a very strong deck, and I'm not surprised that this made it into the finals. Talking about the finals, uh, let's take a look at the deck of his opponent, and uh, I believe he is playing the same colors, but then it's more a Skies strategy. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Masa. So Masa is playing the same colors, but a different strategy. Of course, we do see some overlap with the cards. So he's also playing white, blue, and black. But of course, there are no robots in this deck. And this deck is really more a traditional controlling build. I have called it Skies because of all those beautiful flyers here. We see four Surrender Pafrits, two Sarah Angels, and two Sengir Vampires. But the rest of the deck really looks a lot like the deck, you know, the famous control deck. Because, you know, we have GM Day Tomes, we've got Disrupting Scepter, so we've got that whole card advantage game going. Of course, we've got all the, all the Power 9 cards, you know, we've got Ancestral Recall, we've got Time Walk. Um, we actually don't have a Time Twister, so we don't have all of them. We don't have the Time Twister. I stand corrected. Uh, we do have a full play set of counter spells. We also have a Mana Drain. We've got disenchants we've got swords so there are just a lot of answers in this deck and when i compare the two decks i think that masa really wants to control the game kind of take just have little advantages basically get more cards than his opponent win via that route and maybe you know if he has a quick start hey why not win quickly but the, the main thing about his deck it's more a long-term plan also with the modes you know cards like that Whereas Kaicho, you know, with his workshops, he wants to go much faster. You know, he wants to win it really quickly, get his robots out, copy his robots and go, go, go. Whereas I really see Masa more as the control player in this match. So it's going to be, you know, quite interesting to see if it will also pan out that way or maybe it's going to be completely different. I mean, if I'm looking here at the mana base of Masa, he's also playing with all the Mox and he's also playing with the Lotus, the Soaring and two Flower Stones. So both players pretty heavy in their mana and they both have the ability to accelerate quite quickly and have like a very early and explosive start. So it's going to be, um, it's going to be very interesting. So yeah, this is the deck of Masa. We looked at the deck of Kaicho and that only means one thing. Let's go to the finals. Game uh, number one here is about to begin. On the left, we have Kaicho, and he's playing with white, blue, black, and uh, he's playing robots. And on the right, we have another player also playing white, blue, black. His name is Masa, and he's playing a Skies strategy. So he's playing a lot of flyers and also a very controlling build, counter spell, swords, etc. There is a uh, turn one icy manipulator, by the way, that was a, a Mishra's workshop and a Mox Emerald. Tapping those. For the IC, there we see a quick strip mine here. Of course, this is a format with four strip mines. We're playing according to the Eternal Central rules. There's a Mox Sapphire and another strip. Passing the turn, tapping down the Mox Jet. So no mana here for Masa. Masa playing the planes. Is he going to use the strip for the planes? That's the question. Looks like he is. So the planes is gone. Another workshop there in hand. Passing the turn, though, choosing to go for a strip mine, keeping the workshop in hand for the right moment, that makes sense. There we see an underground sea, no activation though from Kaicho, so it's allowing the underground sea to be there. Nope, he's not. For a moment I was, I mean, I was surprised to see it sticking to the board, and uh, it's hard to see. There's another underground sea tapping the jet, passed by Masa. Masa not really able to do anything. There's a Tetravis, workshop into Tetravis, and here we can really see, you know, the power of the workshops and that means there's a 4-4 flyer on the board here we see Masa taking an extra turn with a time walk it's gonna try to find an answer here for the Tetravis but just passing the turn missing a land drop that is kind of tough remember Kaicho has that icy he can tap down lands as well and it looks like he's going to take off the counters that makes sense so now he's got three 1-1 one -one Tetravites and a 1-1 one -one Tetravis and he swings in for one, of course, those tokens have summoning sickness. And that's the first damage, I believe. So Masa is now going to 19. I'm going to try to uh, keep track of the life totals here for you. So Masa on 19. Kaicho still on 20. And next turn, uh, Kaicho can swing in. Ooh, there is an Armageddon. No, no, he's discarding it. For a moment there, I thought it was playing an Armageddon, but he's, of course, discarding the Armageddon. Has no choice. There's an attack for four. Masa here dropping to 15. There's a Triskelion. It's looking really bad for Masa here. I mean, he's on 15, but that's not going to last long. And he's going to, of course, tap down the Underground Sea with the Icy Manipulator. So Masa is in real trouble here. Needs a bit of a miracle. 
a white source and a balance, for example, discarding here a counter spell passing the turn. And now Kaicho can attack for eight. That is huge. So that means he's now on seven, I believe. So Masa dropping to seven. Pass turn. There's a Tundra. Are we going to see a balance? I think balance. Nope. That's it. What a quick game one. And this is really eternal central magic for you. It's so hard to get your lands to stick. It's so hard to build something on the board. And this was a complete trample walkover by Kaicho, who was able to completely annihilate, destroy all the lands of Masa. And that one land that remained was being tapped down by the Icy. Very powerful here by uh, Kaicho. We are going to let these uh, players sideboard and we will catch back up with them in game uh, number two. Game uh, number two here of the finals in Tokyo, uh, Japan. So Kaicho there drawing a seven. And I think Masa maybe took a mulligan here, maybe six in hand, I think. And look at this, Kaicho also taking a mulligan. So it's gonna go down to six, to five, actually double mulligan for him. There's a Library of Alexandria passing the turn. Oh, there's a quick strip though. Of course, Library of Alexandria not as strong in this format because you've got four strip mines. We do see a Soul Ring as well, a Mox Pearl into Soul Ring. And there's another pass here. So let's see what Masa can do. Hopefully he can find some more lands than in game one. Or of course, if Kaicho finds less of the strip mines, that's also an option. Here we go. So there's a Chaos Orb, Mox Jet, Strip Mine, Chaos Orb. So a lot of action here. There's land number four. There's the Abyss. So the Enchant World from Legends. Draw a card for turn. I wonder if he wants to flip. I mean, he doesn't have to do it now, obviously, but if he, can, if he considers flipping at a certain point on the Abyss, I mean, it will be a problem for him on the long run. He wants to win with creature damage, playing with uh, four Serenips, two Sarah Angels, and two Sengir Vampires. Yeah, he is going to flip. And I mean, you want to do it now because you know that Kaicho doesn't have the mana open to play a Disenchant in reply. So Masai really, uh, <laughs> you know, taking a moment before doing the flip. Uh, is he going to hit it? That's the question. Yes, he is. Well done, sir. Always a lot of uh, pressure on these flips. Remember, this is a finals there. Stripping the uh, Underground Sea, by the way. Look at this workshop and a Lotus. Are we going to see... A big robot here. I wouldn't be surprised. Okay, there's an icy manipulator. I mean, the icy taking a taking a damage of mana burn. By the way, so he's writing that down. So he's going to 19. The thing here, though, is like that icy is so annoying because it's more mana denial, and we saw that in game one as well. It works so well for Kaicho tapping down the mana sources here of Masa. This is such a tough matchup for him thus far. Playing a scrubland, passing the turn, no disenchant for him, unfortunately. I'm sure he would uh, take down the Icy Manipulator if he could. Tapping down the Scrubland here. And let's see. It looks like, though, that there are no more cards in hand here for Kaicho. There's the Surrender Befried. Okay, 3-4 Flyer. But remember, Kaicho can tap it down with that Icy. And that, of course, does mean that uh, Masa would take a damage every turn from his own Surrender. So he's going to drop to 19 as well. Both players now on 19. There's the tap down of the 3-4 flyer. There's a moat. So moat and enchantment from a legends that says that no, uh, the creatures without flying cannot attack. So that means that this uh, Triskelion can actually not attack as long as the moat is on the battlefield. Another damage here from Masa. So he's dropping to 18. Drawing a card for turn. But at least we've got a real game on our hands. I kind of felt that in... Ooh, there's a tap down with the IC. I kind of felt that in game one, we didn't really see a proper battle. It looks like uh, it's going to be more exciting here in game number two. There's a Tetravis. Tetravis is quite useful here for Kaicho because of that moat. Of course, he can fly over the moat. So a 4-4 flyer from Antiquities. We do see a quick Swords to Plowshares, though. Does mean four more life here for Kaicho. I believe he's going to go back up to uh, 23. And there's a pass turn back to Masa. So Masa going to take another damage, going to go down to 17. And that's it, just passing the turn. Like he needs another flyer, like a Sarah Angel or a Sengir, or just another Surrender to at least put some pressure here on Kaicho. And Masa here dropping to 16. And Kaicho, I believe, is still on uh, 23 after that to Swords to Plowshares on the Tetravis. There's a Felwer Stone here. 
There's the attack, and there's the pass. There's a strip mine. Now, strip mines, of course, get, they're still good, but they get less good later in the game because usually your opponent will have more land, so they're just not as, as devastating. I believe Masa here dropping to 16, by the way. Or is it 15? Kind of hard to keep track. There's the attack, tapping it down again. There's a Mox Ruby and a pass. Now remember, the trike cannot do anything because of the, uh, the moat. I believe Masa here dropping to 14. He's got a pretty full grip of cards, so more cards than Kaicho, but can't really do anything, it seems. He's only got four mana, maybe needs an extra mana source. Ooh, there's an Ancestral Recall here for Kaicho. That is huge. Kaicho's still on 23. He's going to draw three cards. One of those was a Mox Sapphire, I believe. Mox is finding the way in a battlefield. He's got so much mana, by the way. Also a factory in there, but he can't really use those because of the moat. Is that a Mind Twist? Oh, look at this. A Mind Twist. That is devastating here for Masa. And I mean, the frustrating thing for Masa is he doesn't have double blue to play out. Oh, we do see a reply. Psionic Blast for four on the life total here of Masa. So he's going to drop to 19, I believe. Also means two more damage for Masa. So he's going to drop to 13. So Kaicho to 19. And Masa losing all those cards. Didn't have double blue, of course, to counter. So that must have been quite frustrating for him. Finding a Mox Ruby. And uh, it's, it's, looking, it's looking bad. I believe he's on 12 or could also be on 11. He is now going to be on 10. So Masa on 10. Kaicho on 19. There's another land. And I mean, this, this Surrender is slowly killing him, you know. I mean, it's going slow, but it's doing the work. And remember, Kaicho also has those three counters on the trike. So it's basically three extra damage. So Masa is on seven. You know, there's a Gloom from the sideboard. Technically, he's on seven. It's going to take another damage. Drop down to nine. There's a Scrub. Oh, it's looking so bad for him. Come on, please, Masa. Draw like a Sari Angel. Give us game number three. I want to see more of these decks. But it's not looking great for us. He's going to drop to 8. And remember with the trike, basically or technically he's on 5. There's a strip activation. Tapping down the Serendip again. Yeah, it's, it's really not looking great here for, uh, for Masa. There's a copy on the trike. Ooh, that's bad. 6 damage on the board. He's going to drop to 7. I think it's end game next turn. Come on, do something. There's a strip mine, I believe, from the top of the deck that's not going to help him. Yeah, that's it. Oh, is he picking up the cards already? I think he is because he knows that next turn he's going to drop to six. And then Kaicho can take off the counters from the trike and deal the six remaining points of damage that way. So this is it. It is what it is. I was hoping on a more exciting finals, but uh, I do think it kind of shows eternal central and and how it works and how explosive it can be and how quick these matches can be both players are also pretty quick players by the way so maybe that's the uh, the style in japan but uh, for now uh thank you very much for showing your skills here on the channel thank you kaicho and uh, masa and congratulations of course to kaicho for winning the meetup here in tokyo japan and before we wrap it up, I would like to thank Nicolas who sent me uh, the magic from Tokyo. Thank you, my friend. He's a Frenchman living in Tokyo, Japan and playing old school magic. How cool is that? Thank you for the matches. And if you want to know more about old school Tokyo and uh, old school in general in Japan, check out uh, the uh, description below because there you will find a link to their Discord uh, channel and also to their Twitter page. So if you're interested in playing old school in Tokyo, check that out right now and you can reach out to Nicola. He is a super friendly guy. Now before you go, please take a moment to like, share and comment on this video. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And talking about moving forward, I also have my very own Patreon page. Check out patreon.com slash timmytalks if you would like to support the channel financially as well. So help me keep the channel afloat by becoming a patron. And if you become a patron, it already starts for just $1 a month. There are some really nice perks attached to it. For example, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord. You can join in all the online events, the tournaments that I organize every couple of months. And also your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video. What end scroll? This end scroll.